we're gonna be doing today is adding some built-in tackle storage. And in this video, I'm going to be installing a built-in tackle storage system and a Pro Team 17 Bass Tracker. So stick around. I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how I did it. We are working on this Bass Tracker Pro Team 17. And this is a full interior restoration slash build-out that I'm doing on this boat. Highly detailed, and what we're going to be doing today is adding some built-in tackle storage. Now, from the factory, this boat has a little wooden panel that goes here that's obviously covered in carpet to finish out the front deck. But what I'm going to do is I've left that part out. We're going to frame in this, frame around this, and then we're going to build a wooden panel that covers this whole area. And then we're going to install a dry storage box into the vertical that holds tackle as a one piece built in unit. So let me show you that. Now, this was actually my customer's idea. He actually found this unit. Now I measured the inside, sent him to dimensions and this is what he found. And this was actually purchased off of uh, boatoutfitters.com. Uh, now tinyboatnation.net, my boys over there actually sell similar products. So I'll leave the links on tinyboatnation.net, there is a discount code. If you use it, it's Brigade, and you can save 5% off your order. A lot of the uh, parts and materials in this boat, um, from the center console to the aluminum I do framing with, to even carpet and rivets are available on tinyboatnation.net. As you can see, this unit is really put together very nicely, and it's already routed for the screw holes. This pin system locks in really really nice it comes with this protective tape so you don't scratch it on your install and again comes with the the plano boxes with the nice little tray system in here and this is just a simple mod you can do if you've already got a console boat whether you're doing something balls to the wall like this or you just want to add some simple storage this is a solution for you because that is an awkward area a lot of guys throw coolers or tackle boxes and we're just going to do something that extends the deck, fills that void, and then gives us more function. So as you can see, this guy fits in there like dang near perfect, which is what we were going for. Um, we've got more room on the back side here as far as your depth, but this thing was perfect for width and height. And I've got a game plan in my head of how I want this to go in here and attach and how I'm going to deck it out. This allowed me to have this void in here for future wiring. And then obviously for this kill switch, I like to do this kind of reverse mounting. Give it a little trick effect to where you don't have that housing on the outside. And uh, that gave me a good spot for that. But nonetheless, we're going to get to framing this thing out. So these two parts are factory. This halfway supports the lid and then supports the deck part that went here. All I'm going to do now is go ahead and continue some framing around the top perimeter to support the deck. So this is just 1 16th inch and a half by inch and a half angled aluminum. Cut these relief joints in it so I could bend it over to mimic the angle that I've got over here. I need to get it about like that. I'm just going to take some of these and start bending and get it about how I want it and install it. All right, I added a few more rivets in that piece and made a slight adjustment so it would plane properly. And I went ahead and cut the next piece. Now, relief joints, same deal. But what I'm going to do this time is run the relief joints up 
and then I'm going to be able to manipulate this part and flex it around this contour of this console. Alrighty, got that part installed. And then what I did was I drilled from the outside to mark my hole and came back in and did the rivets on the inside just to give it a more finished look considering you're going to see the inside. Just looks nicer, more professional. Now I've got this piece that's a little bit bigger angled aluminum, a little bit thicker. It's 1-8. This is just a piece out of a gutted boat. I'm going to just recycle it and put it in here. All right, got this piece riveted in place. It's the basic framework. Got a few more parts to add. Not sure if you caught it in the time lapse segment, but I'm taking a piece of old half inch with the carpet that I'm going to be using. And then what I'm doing is um, I'm taking uh, this level and I'm just using this as a plane to just kind of plane over. And that's how I figured out where my framing needed to go. I don't necessarily care if it's level because the boat's not sitting level right now on this trailer. Just using that as a plane to get me about where I need to be. And now I'm going to move on to uh, adding some pieces on the inside for this storage compartment to attach to. So how I visualize this thing sitting in here is completely flush with the floor, square. All right, and then butt it over into this console. This console has a little bit of a curve, so it's not going to just go straight streamline. But we're going to work with what we got. And that's basically how I visualize it with the top and then the top rolling over and going behind this and this screwing into it. So what I need to figure out at this point is what I'm going to put underneath this to attach it and what I'm going to put on the side. So I've got a couple different sticks of aluminum, and I'm just going to see what I could fit down in there behind something like that maybe that a screw can hit, still hit into and that looks about perfect Let's see this one's a little bigger perhaps this will work oh yeah that'll work nicely so I'm just gonna mock this thing up and get it where I want it and then attach my aluminum to this and to this and to the bottom that way it's got something on these three sides to screw into and then the top section will actually screw in to the wooden top. All right, so on the left side, real tight fit down behind it. I'm gonna go with one inch by one inch angled aluminum on this side. The one inch doesn't fit very well, so I've actually got half inch by one inch, and that's gonna go on this side, and it'll still allow me to tab in this way and this way. I'm gonna go ahead and cut and install. And by the way, I'm cutting all this aluminum with my Ryobi. It's got a 10 inch 40 tooth wood blade, nothing special. Cuts this 1 16th and 1 8th like butter. After I mocked up exactly where I wanted the tackle storage to be, as far as square this way and square that way, what I did was went ahead and put a piece of painter's tape in exactly over where I needed to mount my aluminum. I did that on both sides. Went ahead and removed the box, then came back in with my parts, and just right underneath that tape, I did my insulation. Now, I made sure that this was square, all right, top to bottom, on both sides, because if not, then it would kick this out or kick it in. Now, again, on this side, what I did was went ahead and came on the inside with the rivets, Drilled from the outside, riveted from the inside to give the inside a nice look. Beyond that, we got to add a part on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I think I'm going to connect another piece of framing here. But I need to allow enough space for my 90 degree return on my wood. So that's why this framing is set back. Got it all framed in. On the bottom, went with three quarter by three quarter aluminum, self tappers holding that down into the floor system. And uh, don't discriminate, one inch by one inch, three quarter by three quarter, three quarter by half inch on the side. So whatever works, went ahead and connected the dots on the top, 
and you'll notice I left this gap and I'll show you in a second what that is for but this guy right here goes in and it is a tight fit locks right into place super nice man super nice nice fitment and then that's going to give me something to screw into around the perimeter and then up top i left this like this because what's going to happen is my plywood is going to run wild like that and i'm going to have another piece of plywood on the underside that's going to go down like that and then give me something to tie into this way but right now what i need to do is go ahead and make a template of this it's an odd shape it gets wider as it goes back and then we've got this this uh curvature up against the uh steering console so i'm just going to template it out and take my time in arts and crafts and then we'll have a template to cut the wooden part out of All right, took the template and put it on the half inch plywood. This is exterior grade and I just traced her out. So now I'm gonna take the old Makita, hit her with the straight cuts, jigsaw on the curb, get the part cut out and test fit it. All right, cousins got the part all cut out. What I did was uh, test fit it in the boat and then had to trim a couple spots here and there. Used a table saw to do it. Just ripped a little bit off an edge as needed. All in all, I've got a quarter inch reveal around the perimeter of the part. And for me, that's about what I want because I'm running 20 ounce bass boat carpet in this project. And you can see it's pretty thick stuff. So that reveal just accounts for the carpet. So I could wrap the carpet around the edges and fit the part back into place and hopefully get a nice and tight fit. So let me show you a couple other things regarding this part. So number one, I cut this piece. This is the 90 return. And let me just kind of show you what's going to happen with it is it's going to actually go. Remember, I left this framing offset back. So this part can go right here and it just sits on this lip in here. And then what's going to happen is this part goes on top and overlaps and runs wild and then I'm just going to attach it with some screws and then wrap it all as one carpeted part. And then another thing I did was I ran this through the table saw and went ahead and just ripped it on an angle. Reason being, it's butting up against this panel that is an angle. And so what I found in the past is when I try to take a square part and butt it to an angle part, the bottom edge just catches and binds and kind of holds me up. So for me, if I'm butting an angle, I try to make my deck part on an angle to kind of match that and give me a nice snug fit. All right, there it is. Got this attached on the face. And uh, now what I'm going to do is just coat it in resin. Going to coat the part in fiberglass resin, exterior home use, and 100% waterproof. Guys, if you know me, I've used this for years on my channel and gotten good results, even though it's polyester resin. Still adds a really good layer of protection to the wood as opposed to just leaving it untreated. Um, so we're going to go ahead and coat this thing with a fiberglass resin. I'm going to mix it up between the resin and the hardener. Mix it up, spread it out. Nice thick layer on the part and then get the perimeter, all the edges. Let it sit up in the garage and cure overnight. Want to just show you guys this real quick this is the idea behind that cured resin as you can see the water just beads right off that resin and i've done videos on my channel that show parts like this submerged in water overnight with no delamination of the plywood so this is just perfect for a boat part with carpet to give it an extra layer of protection in case you get caught out in a rainstorm I still recommend the boats stay covered or stay in a garage, but this will just help uh, with long-term wear and tear of these parts and just give this part the ultimate lifespan it can have on the boat. Now that I've demonstrated that, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this part and sand some of the sheen off of it. Just hit it with some uh, 60 grit, 
knock that sheen down and give that carpet glue something to bite to because this cured resin is just a really waxy surface. Got my carpet out. Only thing worth noting here is I've got marked that this direction is forward. Everything that's carpeted inside this boat is directional. So every single part is wrapped with the carpet grain going the exact same direction. So when it goes back in the boat, it matches and looks professional. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out and then we're gonna get it wrapped. What I'm using is 20 ounce bass boat carpet with the backing. That's what we're doing this boat in. I'm gonna use Robert's Indoor Outdoor Carpet Adhesive. Now for use on boats, cousins. Got me a little spreader. I like the Roberts particularly for wooden parts. Um, it works really well. It's tacky. It grabs the carpet off the bat and it cures and sets up pretty quickly. And using the spreader, it, it evens and levels out really nicely. So I like the Roberts. Got this old win uh, staple gun with an air hose to my compressor in the garage. And I uh, got that on Amazon. And then the key here is stainless staples for the 20 ounce. I'm using 5 16th staples. Then I got a pair of pliers, so when I get to cutting and um, wrapping around the backside and the edges, I use those pliers to pull that carpet tight and then shoot it with the staples. Alrighty, all carpeted up, cousins. Nice. Turned out very, very nice. Time to install. Man, that is a nice and tight fitment. Gets me just a little bit excited. Um, a little bit high over here, but that's okay because uh, we're going to attach this with some screws and that'll sink that down nice and tight and snug. So let's talk about the screws and how I'm going to attach it. All right, here's the screws I'm going to use to tie this panel down. These are inch and a half stainless steel, number eight size head self-tapping screws. Purchase them on Amazon get a pack of 100 of these guys for only 10 bucks leave the link down below order these all the time guys in a variety of sizes great deal all right so what i do is i take uh matte gray spray paint and i hit them with the matte gray and then i come back over and lightly miss some black and it just kind of gives you that look and what what it'll do is when you tie these down and through it will blend into the carpet and it won't be super obvious where the screw heads are. Just give you a cleaner look, man. So I've got eight of them. I don't know how many I'm gonna use on this panel, but uh, the inch and a half is enough meat on it to get through the wood, through the carpet. And if you lap on the underside and carpet, it burns through everything and then hits framing and, and, and tightens down. So inch and a half, let's tie it down. All right, now with that in place, the last thing I need to do is permanently mount the built-in tackle storage box. And to do this, this unit comes with pre-drilled holes. Of course, we've got our framing picture framed around. And at the top, we're gonna tie into the wood lip. So eight holes, eight screws. These are countersink. Nice uh, and flush fitment for our screw heads to attach. Same deal as earlier. Going to use some one inch this time stainless steel screws get from Amazon. Going to just drive the one inchers through, get this where I want it, and just tie it down, man. That's all there is to it. This build is 100% done. It's going home with the customer tomorrow, but before it does, Let's take a look at how this built-in tackle storage system turned out.
I went ahead and moved this thing over in the shade so we could take a better look at it without having any shadows. Honestly, if you watched the video up until this point, there's not a lot to look at. You've seen the process. You see the final result. Jam up jelly tight on the fitment up top. And that panel, again, is removable, just screwed down. Does not interfere with how this hatch opens and closes. Just a nice tight fitment, how I like it. It alleviates that awkward space in front of the console. And as you can see, just boxes this out nice and symmetrical, just super clean. And there is some dead space behind this unit just based on the width that we had, there's only so many sizes, but it fits perfect in this width. And then that dead space is made to use, as you can see underneath, you've got that kill switch in the back corner, and then you've got the fuse box and all the leads coming in there for all the onboard electronics. And the kill switch actually recesses into that void and is wired in from the back. So that just worked out perfect with the sizing. Of this unit and i really like the quality it's a real nice unit and there's a lot of different ones out there but just the construction of this thing and how all these screws are holding it together and then when you pull out the boxes how nice that is inside and how this locks into there and closes and it's got a nice shiny finish and it came with a tape on it to protect it and shipping from scratches or even on the install process but that's it cousins i enjoyed this build i enjoyed this project have more videos on this boat to come so check those out this thing turned out really 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 clean very excited about this project thanks for watching cousins we'll see you on the next one